Welcome back. So, uh, we were discussing about the uh, you know Q switching phenomena, particularly we were discussing about how we can use a Pockel cell and form a Q switch. So, let us uh, start from the place uh, where we stopped last time. So, uh, we said that we applied uh, a 4 kV voltage for very short duration time that is 5 microsecond and this uh, particular amount of voltage, you know, it causes what it does, it uh, flips the polarization of light. from vertical to horizontal again. I said again. Why? Because it was initially horizontal. So, here this is horizontal okay. and it goes through this one. This is circularly polarized light and this is another circularly polarized light it is coming through and then when it passes through this one this becomes vertical. And this guy over here when I applied this amount of voltage it rotates the plane of the polarization by 90 degree again and this becomes again this. So, it allows and this is possible only when I apply the voltage by a particular amount which is in this particular case, I am telling 4 kilo, kilo volt and these numbers that I am taking is generally used in uh, ND arc laser which is Q switch ND arc laser. This is just for your information. All right. So, <coughs> now uh, in, the, in this case, uh, I will allow the beam now to pass through the active medium again and I will depopulate the you know uh, the active medium totally to get output okay. and my time period for which this Pockel cell is uh, you know on. So, when I say Pockel cell is on that means uh, essentially I have uh, low loss. Okay. So, at that you know uh, condition, I will have round trips taking place and a huge number of photon will start coming out from this output coupler. And how will it look like? So, at this time, so this is say when that Q switch is being started, okay, so T Q okay, so at 0 time. So, I will get like this and as time will pass by, so more and four photon will go. So, because more and more pop, you know depopulation will take place. So, after some time there will be no more photons in the excited state. So, there will be no more light coming out. So, it will gradually decay like this. Okay. So, again the same thing will happen and I will get another pulse. So, it will form a pulse strain. So, uh, the repetition rate will uh, depend on few things. So, first I know that uh, in case of Q switching I need to uh, allow the population inversion to take place while there is no photon in the cavity. Now, if I use a flash lamp to create the population inversion, then it will depend a lot on the flash lamp. And normally in India laser, since I was talking about uh, certain parameters for India laser only. So, for an India laser, it takes uh, for the uh, flash lamp uh, to you know create a sufficient population inversion, uh, it takes almost 200 microsecond okay, for the flash lamp. So, after 200 
microsecond, I can turn on the Q switch and then allow it to be on for 5 microsecond and then again closes and then again you know wait for uh, you know uh, 200 microsecond and in that way. So, I can uh, get ultimately a very you know large amount of uh, uh, photons as a pulse and uh, one thing is very important here that this uh, this switch that we are using which is which consists of this three optics focal cell linear polarizer and quarter reflect. So, uh, this be uh, synchronized with the flash lamp. Okay. So, then only we can get a proper pulsed output from the laser having high energy. So, this in this particular case what we are doing we are actively modulating the quality of the cavity, okay. controlling quality of the cavity getting pulsed output. So, this Q switch is actually being modulated by us from outside. Okay. Without us manipulating it, it is not going to give me the desired output. Correct. So, this particular type of Q switching is known as active Q switching. So, this example talks about active Q switching. And for that matter, uh, the previous one that we talked about, uh, which is uh, using rotating uh, mirror, that one is also an active Q switching. So, the moment I am talking about active Q switching, there is a possibility that there is a passive mode, uh, passive Q switching. So, actually there is a technique called passive Q switching. So, let us have a look at that. So, passive Q switching. which means that uh, this principle will remain same. Okay. What we are going to do? We are going to create a switch which does not need us. Once we place it, it can work on its own. Okay. So, that is what a passive Q switching means. Okay. And the same thing will be applied when we will be talking about other type of uh, uh, pulsing technique that is mode locking. So, there also we will have active as and passive mode locking. So, what is done in case of pa uh, passive Q switching? So, this one is probably the simplest arrangement. Okay. So, you uh, you take one as high reflector and then output coupler active medium do not worry about these things anymore. And then what do you do? You put a material right here. Okay. So, So, this can be just a solution filled in a uh, you know transparent container. So, so, this one is it can be anything it can be a dye, uh, it can be some you know uh, film. Okay. So, but it should have certain properties. So, what are the properties? So, the you know uh, it this particular material should be a saturable absorber. Okay. So, this dye must be a saturable absorber. 
So, the immediate question is what is a saturable absorber? Let me tell you briefly. So, saturable absorber. So, you, you are all familiar with the term saturation now. So, I have no problem in describing this one. So, <coughs> this is a kind of material where if you keep on increasing the intensity of light falling on it, then after some time it will saturate. Okay. So, that means it cannot absorb any further. So, so you, you can imagine it is like a condition like if you have say this two state and then there are several molecules here. This, this is very strongly absorbing sample. Okay. So, one, one particular uh, criteria for this particular material here uh, is that it must absorb the particular wavelength that is being emitted by our active medium. So, so this is one very important aspect without this it will not work. So, this uh, this material must have strong absorption. at the frequency or wavelength of the emission. This emission is the emission uh, which ultimately creates the laser. Okay. So, what will happen? So, the moment I put light, this guy will go here, it will be here. Now, if more and more photon comes, okay. so that means it will create more and more populations. Okay. So, the moment there are huge amount of light coming in, then it will highly populate. So, let us look at this situation. I excite the active medium using my pump, it will create population inversion and it will have some spontaneous emission and because of the spontaneous emission, uh, there will be some stimulated emission. So, along with spontaneous emission, this stimulated emission will also go in different direction. So, there will be light coming toward this material, correct, toward my saturable absorber, which absorbs that particular light, be the spontaneous emission or the stimulated emission, both have the same frequency. Now, at the beginning, when I you know start pumping, the number of photons are small. As I give some more time, more population inversion is created, more number of photons are coming and hitting this absorber. So, after some time, there are so much of population inversion created that the amount of spontaneous emission is sufficient to saturate the level. That means, the population of these two states are now equal. Okay. So, n 2 and n 1, they are equal the moment they are equal, then the rate of absorption and emission same there, correct. So, the probability of transition, forward transition or uh, upward transition or downward transition, they are same. So, essentially what will happen at that condition of saturation, if I send in light, light will just simply pass through. Before that, light is getting absorbed. That means, this, this particular guy is essentially opaque. Okay, up to some time t, okay, say up to t. After this time t, I will have enough photons that can actually make this saturated absorption or turn this saturated absorption transparent after time t. So, before this time t, my cavity was lossy, because this saturable absorber 
it was not allowing the light to hit the high reflector. After time t, now this guy is allowing the light to go and hit the high reflector and also coming back. So, this is what we want. We first created loss and now all of a sudden we open the gate so that light can traverse through the active medium back and forth between HR and output coupler. So, I generate gain and I get light output till the time population inversion exists there. Once all the molecules are depopulated again like in the previous case, it will repeat the whole uh, you know absorption thing again okay. and again it will open up at a certain time. So, this is very similar to the previous two uh, you know pulse uh, cue switching method that we discussed. Okay. So, here this dye which is a saturable absorber is acting just like a switch and it is switching the quality of the cavity from low quality to high quality depending on the number of photon or the intensity of light that is hitting it. And the intensity of light that hit is hitting this saturable absorber, it depends on the time because time is needed to create large population inversion and therefore, large amount of photon in terms of mostly spontaneous emission coming and hitting this absorber. So, this mode of Q switching is known as is, is, uh, is a passive Q switching. Why? Because we are not doing anything, we all we are doing we are taking this dye, if we are talking about dye or whatever the material is, we are putting in front of this high reflector. And then we are just watching up from outside, we are not doing anything, we do not have to modulate anything. So, this is kind of self modulate. Okay. So, this is what is passive Q switching. Okay. So, so, um, so, there are uh, you know several different types of uh, saturable absorber. So, uh, I will name one uh, essentially this is some kind of uh, uh, cyanine dyes which are uh, you know very routinely used to create this uh, Q switching passive Q switching uh, because they can act like a saturable absorber. All right. So, uh, I think uh, this is pretty much about the Q switching part. Okay, I tried to be as elaborate as possible, uh, you know, so that uh, you know you understand this concept very clearly. Now, uh, before I move over to the next topic, I will reiterate uh, another important point that the cavity dumping and Q switching, both of them are pulsing technique, and both of them can give decent high energy. Uh, pulsed output of similar kind of time scale. So, in the case of nanosecond, uh, in case of cavity damping, there are certain advantages that it can uh, still give uh, you know around nanosecond pulses, uh, even when the num you know repetition rate is very high, which is little difficult for the Q switching. It is quite easy to understand if you think about it, you need to give quite a bit of time uh, to the active medium, so that the population inversion is created. So, just 5 minutes back I talked about uh, active Q switching, there I said like it takes 200 microsecond okay, for the flash lamp to build enough population. So, that is quite a you know uh, large time and then it will you know uh, uh, it will uh, uh, the Q switch will work and uh, it will form the pulse. Now, <coughs> Many times people get confused uh, with the concept of cavity dumping and uh, Q switching because at the end you will feel like okay, both of them are you know emptying the cavity at some point of time and after that you know uh, once all the lights are out as a pulse, there is nothing inside the cavity. 
Then what is the es essential difference? I am sure that by now you have understood what is the difference, but still I will say it again. In case of cavity dumping, you do not block the oscillation within the cavity. Round trips are always going on. You, you are storing the energy inside the cavity S and at the end you are dumping all the energy out. This is cavity dumping. Contrastingly, in case of Q switching, you block the oscillation. You do not allow the cavity to function as a resonator. It is not working as a optical resonator because the you know high reflector part of the cavity is non-functional there because light is not reaching there. You are blocking it somehow. So the moment you are blocking, you are you know uh, actually adding to the loss of the cavity. So there is no photon build up within the cavity, but you know photon is it is uh, actually doing its job in form of pump photon and creating population inversion. So energy is getting stored in the active medium. In cavity dumping energy is stored in the cavity, in Q switching the act, you know uh, energy is stored in the active medium. And once you remove the source of loss, so you switch from lossy to a gain mode, you allow the pop, you know excited states to depopulate getting a pulse output. So there is clear cut difference between cavity dumping and Q switching in the way we you know uh, these two processes are defined. Okay. So, now we will talk about uh, the other technique that is used to uh, create pulsed output. So, yes we are talking about mode locking. So, this cavity dumping and Q switching are the you know mostly used uh, pulsing technique and the third most widely used technique is this mode locking. So, this is the third most pulsing technique. Okay. Uh, so, why do I need another technique? We already have two and within those two we have active, we have passive uh, different modes of uh, pulsing techniques. Now, this particular mode of, uh, this particular way of uh, uh, forming laser pulses uh, is needed because this technique can give rise to really, really small time duration pulse. Okay. So, mode locking uh, this technique is used to create uh, light pulses with very short time duration. So, <clears throat> when I say very short, how much it is? So, very short can be typically in the order of 10 power minus 12 to even 10 power minus 15 second. That means, from picosecond to femtosecond. So, these are really short and these are known as ultra short, ultra short 
pulses. Now, the question is why do we need ultra short pulses? Why do we use ultra short pulses? So, the you know this ultra short pulses find uh, you know their application mostly in chemistry and biology and in certain cases some physics problems. So, in case of chemistry you have chemical reactions that can take place in a very short time scale which is in the order of say picosecond or femtosecond okay a breaking of a bond okay so if i need to know how a bond is being broken okay what is the dynamics of this bond breaking i need to have you know uh, just like you know any camera sp speed here if i can you know shine light with very short time duration, I can take the pictures of the processes that are happening at that time scale. So, that is the need of ultra short pulses in case of chemical reactions. Similarly, in biology you need uh, you know ultra short pulses to understand several phenomena starting like you know photosynthesis and so on. So, we need ultra short pulses and this particular mode locking uh, technique is uh, the way out by which we can create this ultra short pulses. So, we will talk about this uh, particular uh, uh, technique in detail in the uh, uh, following class, uh, where we will also learn how to you know estimate in the uh, you know uh, real cases what will be the pulse width uh, for a given uh, you know configuration of a laser. So, uh, we will see you uh, tomorrow again. Thank you very much for your attention.